Hello, here is the news at this hour from T Solid TV. I am Online Day Amosu. Here are some major headlines. Marking Day suspends Oyoma Board, sets up ad hoc committee. Federal government orders Unity Schools to reopen October 12th. On the foreign scene, Trump wife tests positive for COVID 19. Exciting World of Sports, Tottenham snap up Vinicius on initial season long loan. Now the news in details. The state governor, Engineer Shea Makinde, has suspended the Board of Oyo State Waste Management Authority, Oyoma, over failure to effectively carry out its waste management responsibility. Makinde disclosed this on Thursday during a special program with Newsman, noting that the human gas trash on streets and roadsides has become an eyesore to the state government, thus the need for the suspension. The governor, however, said he has set up an ad hoc committee to take over the responsibility of collecting and managing waste generated in the state with the provision of skip bins at specific locations across the state, pending the time the Board of Oyo State Waste Management Authority will correct its wrongs. Governor McKinday also appealed to the Oyo State residents whose action and inaction of the state's waste management authority has affected for the past one month to bear with the governor and expect changes soon as. Oyo State Governor Engineer Shei Makinde says his administration has successfully reduced the infrastructural deficit in the state. Makinde, who stated this in a statewide broadcast in commemoration of the country's Diamond Jubilee yesterday, also revealed that the Akoba Ojunri Road, which was mismanaged by the contractor engaged by the last administration, is on the verge of being reawarded. He also called for patience on the side of the people whenever they notice that expected dividends of democracy are slower in coming, noting that one of the disadvantages of the system is that it must follow bureaucratic processes which often slows down decision-making. The governor, however, stated that the current democratic experience is one of the positives that must be maintained and nurtured to maturity, noting that Nigerians should seize the occasion of the nation's 60th independence anniversary and focus on moments of its happiness, rather than looking behind and living in regrets. The federal government has today announced that all unity schools in Nigeria should resume with effect from October 12th. The Minister of Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, stated this during a press conference in Abuja. According to the minister, schools across the country are at liberty to fix resumption dates and ensure adequate safety measures. The minister warns that schools who fail to adhere to the outlined COVID-19 safety protocols risk closure if there is an outbreak from such institutions. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has expressed disagreement on comments reflective of a bleak view of Nigeria's history. He said that despite the wondrous challenges Nigerians faced and endured as a people, over the past 60 years, there was still reason to face the future with hope. Oshibaja's spokesman, Laulu Akonde, in a statement in Abuja, said the vice president spoke on Thursday at the virtual edition of the National Lahili Party Society of Nigeria, NASPAT Global Youth Seminar. The Vice President in his statement said the youth's capacity for innovation would come in handy in an era of scarcity and unequal distribution of resources, noting that much of the discontent and tensions that Nigeria has are distributional conflicts ignited by the struggle for access to tangible and intangible resources. Recalling efforts made in the past to promote unity among Nigerians and progress among, across different sectors of the economy, Oshibaja said, Nigerians will not relent in striving for a progressive and united country. Moving on to the foreign scene, United States President Donald Trump has today said he had tested positive for COVID-19 and would quarantine inside the White House during his recovery, cancelling upcoming appearances on the campaign trail ahead of a bitterly fought election. The White House doctor said both Trump and First Lady Melania, who also tested positive, were well and that Trump would continue his presidential duties without disruption. The two were tested after a close White House aide, Hope Hicks, had tested positive earlier in the day, with the bombshell news breaking as more restrictions loomed in Europe than attempts to contain the deadly pandemic. 
Hicks was reported to be on a board on board Air Force One with the president as he traveled to Cleveland, Ohio for the first presidential debate with his rival, Democrat Joe Biden, on Tuesday. Ivory Coast, the world's biggest cacao exporter, said yesterday that it would hike the guaranteed minimum price for farmers by 21% for the 2020-2021 growing season. The announcement was made by President Althin Altara at the start of an annual trade fair for the cacao industry, the West African country's biggest economic sector. Altara said to applause from farmers in the capital Yamos my Yamo Sucre, that the country has decided to increase the price from 825 to 1,000 Sefa francs a kilo, with the price floor is set once a year. The announcement comes in the run-up to a presidential election on October 31st, in which Altara, who's 78, is controversially seeking a third term in office. However, the 2020-2021 harvest in the Ivory Coast is likely to be the same as in 2019-2020 at around 2.1 million tonnes, according to the International Cocoa Organization, ICCO, an estimate that depends on political calm. Moving on to the exciting world of sports, the UEFA Champions League returns for the 2020-2021 football season after the group stage draw and award ceremony held in Geneva, Switzerland yesterday. Match day one of the UEFA Champions League kicks off on the 20th of October and rounds up with the finals on the 29th of May. Hosted at the Atok Strait Stadium in Turkey, site of Liverpool's famous 2005 comeback victory over AC Milan. However, the draw sees holders Bayern Munich squaring off against Atletico in Group A, with runners at PSG facing a trip to Old Trafford in Group H, during Giants Juventus battle Barcelona for supremacy in Group G, with supreme rivals Messi and Cristiano facing off. Liverpool and Ajax in Group D meet for the first time since 1966, where the Reds suffered a 5-1 defeat to the Dutch Giants. Tottenham has reached an agreement to sign forward Carlos Vinicius on loan from Benfica until the end of the season. The initial 2.7 million loan deal for Carlos Vinicius also includes a purchase option of 41 million euros, though the amount paid for the loan will be deducted if exercised. Tottenham have been desperate to sign a backup for star Harry Kane, following previous links to Napoli's Accra Dewey's Milik and Torini captain Andrea Bilotti. Jose Mourinho's sports have now turned to Brazilian Carlos Vinicius, who only joined Benfica from Serie A side Napoli last year. While Carlos Vinicius is said to have scored 18 goals in 32 Premier La Liga appearances last season, netted 22 in all competitions. The 25-year-old ended the 2019-2020 Premier League campaign with Benfica finished runner-ups to rivals Porto as a joint top scorer along with teammates PZ and Rio Aves Medi Taremi. With that, we've come to the end of the news, a recap of the headlines. Makinde suspends Oil Mar Board sets up ad hoc committee. Federal government others Unity Schools to reopen October 12th. From the foreign scene, Trump, wife, tests positive for COVID-19. Exciting World of Sports, 13 putting hands snap up Vinicius on initial season-long loan. Please do not forget to always adhere to COVID-19 safety measures. The news was compiled by Mobola Badekale. I am Olaide Amusi. Good day and thank you for watching. Thank you.